So uh, my name is Lloyd Watts. Uh, I'm the uh, founder of a small startup that you've not yet heard of uh, called Neocortex. Uh, I'm trying to do something, uh, an idea that's been around for a long time, to use mobile processors uh, to do brain-like computation. For the last 10 years, that's not been a good idea. Mobile processors haven't been sufficiently capable to make it interesting to actually do it. However, in the last two years, I took another look at it and found something, found that it may be an idea that is becoming viable now that has not been viable until just recently. So the, the idea now that, that I'm trying to pursue is uh, I'm trying to build a brain and I'm trying to build a brain out of cell phones or cell phone mobile processors. It's going to require some kind of high-level cortical process that uh, I'm showing there efficient computation, some high-level brain processing, some kind of sensing operations, some kind of actuator acting, acting out in the world, the robotics, and some kind of learning process. The small platform that I have right now, the beginning scaling of something that can scale, is a collection of mobile phones kind of like Google's early machine, a collection of PCs. Um, obviously, this is a very humble beginning with just a small number, but we can have as many of those as we want. So uh, I'm doing it because I think it's interesting from a scaling point of view that mobile phones are being pushed very hard in the industry, uh, and it may be possible to ride a wave of those over time that may, be, may allow us to succeed in some niches that uh, might be surprising. So that's a sort of a general view. I'm trying to build an efficient computer made up of commodity parts that make sense in 2016. The robotics piece, I'm working on a, a, a type of robot that may have some interesting properties. I'll show you in a, in a minute, but there's a robotics component to it. And there's a sensory component uh, that looks familiar to some of my prior work in auditory space. Um, this is the general picture of what I'm trying to do with all of this tied together with learning. So for the efficient computation, many of you may recognize this picture. This is a picture of Google's first working prototype in 1999. It consisted of four PCs and 44 disk drives connected together. The selection criteria for the four PCs were, according to Larry Page, uh, that no one at Stanford would notice that they were missing. Um, that's my first machine. Ten cell phones put together on a tray. You see that there's wires there connecting them. That's simply the USB cords plugging them into a power, you know, keeping them charged. But they're talking to each other wirelessly. Um, the, the Google machine, four PCs, 44 disk drives. But ultimately, this turned into data centers based on commodity PCs. Now, when they did, started this in 1999, don't forget that there were companies like Sun and Oracle and Dell and HP that would have loved to sell them gigantic servers, and expensively so. Uh, but they said, no thanks, we'll just buy cheap commodity PCs and put lots and lots of them together. That's, that's a wonderful idea, and it, obviously it's done extremely well for them. If you were to ask, what, what would you do if you were going to start a company like Google in 2016? Possibly you would start with commodity PCs. That's what they did. But I asked the question instead, what would you do? What would I do? Well, let me start with commodity phones instead and see what that looks like if we, if we follow that idea to a, some sort of logical conclusion. So right now I'm starting with 10 cell phones conveniently located, uh, you know, mounted on a 19-inch rack. And I'll be able to have as many of those, like baker's trays with cookies in them. Uh, now, the. The first question, whether does this make sense to do or not, the first thing that I did when I tried this was, you got to measure, it, is this, does this actually make sense from a power efficiency point of view? Are phones more efficient than PCs? If they're, if they're simply more expensive and they're, more, and they're less power efficient, then this is actually just a dumb idea. And that's, when, it, when you look at uh, websites, uh, there's, Sites in 2010, 2009, people saying, oh, couldn't you build a render farm out of phones? And there would always be some expert who would come on and say, that's a dumb idea. They're just too weak. They're expensive. So it, it doesn't make sense. 
So 2010, it didn't make sense. I measured it. There we are. Well, it's a little bit washed out, but what this is showing, um, in order to measure it, I got an open source renderer program called Pavre, Persistence of Vision. Now that runs on Linux PCs and on Windows PCs, but it does not run on Android. So in order to do a fair comparison to measure the power consumption and the performance of an Android phone, you have to port the same software and run it on the new, the new platform. Now it turns out that's surprisingly hard to do. If you try and take this gigantic ray tracing program, it's millions of lines of code distributed in thousands of files that are all C and C++. You have to use the Android native development kit, and Android doesn't support gigantic programs like that, and especially if they include gigantic libraries like Boost and OpenEXR and JPEG and TIFF and so on. So it turns out some real skill is required in order to even do the benchmark. And for that reason, as far as I know, no one's done the benchmark. Murat introduced me to some folks at the Air Force Research Lab when I showed them my power consumption results, and they said, well, we've been wondering when somebody would show up with actual benchmarks to show this. The reason no one has is because it's so hard to even compare apples to apples, same code running on the two different kinds of machines. But it can be done if you extend Google's operating environment, development environment, and add support for those kinds of libraries. So I did. So those two screenshots on the, on the right are pictures of Pavre, the open source renderer, running on an Android phone and producing the rendered image. So it looks easy, but in fact, surprisingly difficult. Um, but if you do that, then you could compare the phones so, against PCs. So I did that. OK, two minutes, all right. So what this is showing here is the power consumption efficiency of a 2013, 2013 vintage phone. That's a Galaxy S4 compared to a 2000 vintage PC. And what this is showing is, well, it, it took 11 phones to equal one PC, and the amount of, in terms of time, to 11 minutes to render an image that would take one minute on a PC, and the power consumption was about one-tenth, so it was basically a wash. In 2013, this was a dumb idea. Phones weren't even as efficient as, uh, as PCs. But before I abandoned it, I said, this was about eight months ago, I said I should try this again, but now buy a new phone and buy a new PC. Try it again. And Here's the surprising and interesting result. The PC, the 2015 PC, was almost the exact same power consumption as the 2013 one, but the phone was four and a half times more efficient. It was now only three to one, and it was less than half the power consumption per, per computation. So the net result is phones crossed over about eight months ago. An idea that for the last decade has been a dumb idea suddenly has become an interesting idea. Phones are now four and a half times more efficient and getting faster if, if this trend continues. That would seem to extend uh, that, that it's getting better. And this happened because we now have double precision hardware acceleration in the phone with 64-bit processors in octa-core phones. Okay, so it now makes sense to do it. Uh, this is just showing that you can get fast communications wirelessly with the phones. Um, the robotics platform, uh, if we're going to build a brain, we probably want to have a body for, to go along with it, and there's going to be applications for that. So um, I began working on a, a robot platform that has some surprising properties. Most robots, quadruped robots, look like dogs or spiders. But if you build them out of Cartesian X, Y, and Z actuators in the arms or in the legs, you can get something that operates and looks differently. Here's an animation of this robot with Cartesian actuators doing a turn, walking forward, doing another turn, and then about to walk upstairs. Now, the whole thing is made out of rectangular components. It doesn't look like a dog or a spider. It looks like a table. Now, if... You, and I like the reaction. If you're giving a bit of a giggle, like, yeah, this is kind of goofy looking. Right? Good. No one is going to write, as Boston Dynamics has been getting in the press, Boston Dynamics and Google's terrifying robot from the future are here to kill us all. That's been showing up in the press lately. If you have a domestic robot in your house to do tasks for you, like carry boxes up, you know, 40 pound boxes up your stairs, I had to do that a few weeks ago, 40, 40 pound boxes up, up and down to move something in and out. 
That's something that looks just like a table. It might be less threatening, less like a robot apocalypse and more like something you might want to have in your house. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Is it just a simulation? No, I've actually got it working. At least, oh, sorry, here's the, here's the working prototype. X, Y, and Z, that would be Y moving back and forth. Here is X side to side, and Z up and down, is up and down. And if you notice over here, there's the wireless control, and that's the battery making it all work. Uh, 30 bucks from Home Depot, that's the kind of thing you plug into a power drill. 12 volts just totally works. So a guy like me can just do this in a few weeks. I think I can build a working robot that, you know, it's not as fully functional as Atlas. On the other hand, it's only had a couple weeks and a few thousand dollars worth of investment. Okay, last thing. Uh, let's just see if I can make it with the sensory processing. You can now do some pretty amazing things on a phone. Uh, I hope that the audio will work. We'll find out. Nope, looks like it's not working. Okay, but this is a scrolling picture showing violin playing beautifully. And there we are. And picking it off the pitch. Just five seconds more of that. There we go. Now, this is just using a uh, conventional signal processing techniques, but this is only the monophonic version of it. It's only working for single note instruments like, for example, violins. The polyphonic version of it, I expect to do in the next few months, and I expect to use a deep learning technique in order to achieve that, trained from data from the monophonic version. Okay, that's uh, the, the progress for the last year or so.